Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to be playing with NFED half wave antennas. I made a homemade one. I want to show you what I did. We're going to test it out and check it out. So that's right here, right now on Ham Radio for non techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for non-techies, guys. Like I said, I've been experimenting with ham and ham radio a little bit, as you should. If you're a ham operator, you're going to eventually want to start playing with things and making new stuff and trying new things. And I've made a bunch of NFED halfways before. I mean, if you've made one, you've made you've made pretty much all of them. But I wanted to try different configurations, different types of stuff. So what I came up with was this little monster that I'm going to call the Beast. <laughs> and normally, uh, I did a uh, on the most recent field day here in 2022. I uh, was allowed to uh, come go down to my club and have a class on building NFED half waves. We had about 15 people that were actually got to build, and probably about another 15 or 15 or so people that were kind of watching. Uh, but it, it was very, very popular, very, very popular activity out there, and a lot of people really enjoyed it. So I wanted to go off and try some more stuff later on and try different things. Now, in in the class, we used a 14043 toroid. You'll see on this one, I'm using a much large one. This is a 24043, and I've doubled them up. I've kind of stacked two on top of each other, and I wrapped them with 18-gauge magnet wire, uh, which is what you see here. And this is a 49-to-1 transformer we've got here. Uh, one of the other major differences, aside from the size of the toroids and that I've got, that I've got them double stacked, is the capacitor down here. I don't know if you can see that or not. You should be able to. Uh, that capacitor is a 100 picofarad 15 kilovolt capacitor. Now, I'm probably going to be showing my ignorance. I'll probably get a bunch of stuff in the comments. Feel free. I don't care. It's fine. My understanding is that when you're building one of these out and you want to put a capacitor on, 100 picofarad is what you really want. But you can get away with using a 1 kilovolt capacitor. And I think what happens is when you use a larger one, like a 15 or anything larger, a larger capacitor, uh, what it does is it expands the uh, bandwidth that you can tune that antenna to. So we're going to give this one a shot here. And like I said, there's not a whole lot to this. I designed this wire winder in Tinkercad. I will put the STL for this uh, for this wire winder down below, probably on my website somewhere. You guys just download it. So you will need access to a 3D printer or know somebody with a 3D printer to print this. The instructions for everything will also be on the website as well. And uh, this would allow you guys to build a cool little afternoon project. Uh, you can also make this wire winder out of a piece of thin plywood if you wanted to. I mean, you can, it's going to be a little more difficult trying to get stuff onto it, but you know, you, you can still do it. So even if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you should still be able to play with this thing and get one of these things uh, made. But uh, yeah, that's really all there is to it, guys. I mean, it's you know, 68 feet of wire. I got the connections up here with a strain relief up on top. Uh, you zip ties to mount the uh, transformer to the to the board. And that's it. A little bit of solder down below for the SO239. I used a, uh, I used a, a, a chassis mount SO239, and I put rivets in it and one screw that I could uh, actually put my connections in right here. So you, you can do it however you want. There's, there's various ways of doing it. Like I said, if you've built one NFED half wave, you've kind of built them all. I'm just changing the parameters of the type of materials that are being used to build this, and that's pretty much it. So let's go down to the park and let's get this thing up on a on the rig expert. We'll see if we can get it tuned and see what kind of tuning we're getting from it. And uh, we will go from there and uh, put it on the radio and see what happens. Now, as far as the power that this thing will handle, being a much larger transformer like this, I'm assuming, I, I, I really don't know, and this goes back to my ignorance again, I don't know how to measure how much power this thing can handle. I'm going to assume just from past things I've seen, I've got the Chameleon uh, lightweight NFED sloper, which is similar to this, but it has a single 24043, and that one handles up to 500 watts. So I assume this will handle at least 500 watts of power, not that I've got an amplifier to bring out, or I would bring out an amplifier from doing parks on the air stuff, but you know, you could definitely modify this uh, design to make it fit your way and do whatever you want with it. Anyway, let's get out to the park here and give it a test. All right, guys, so we're out at my favorite park that uh, if my dogs knew I was here, they'd be pretty upset me because I didn't bring them along. But um, so we're going to set this antenna up, or I've already set the antenna up. I don't want to waste your time making you watch me put up poles and stuff. But the base configuration I've got out here is kind of the same as always. I've got the antenna here on one of my little, little electric fence poles. 
I've got my uh, ABR Industries coax with the seven ferrite chokes uh, in line with the coax. That's leading back to the radios over here on the table. And the wire here goes all the way up into my DX Commander Expedition pole that I just have up here leaning into a tree. And we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start the tuning process. I got this hooked up to my uh, rig expert already. And I'll go ahead and make, get a reading on that and see if I need to make a cut. Now, uh, in full disclosure, I tried shooting this video earlier this month. And um, I actually cut the wire too short, so I had to go back. And instead of doing a whole new 68 foot, feet of wire, what I did is I went and I, uh, I soldered two wires together and put some shrink wrap. So if you see later on in the video where I'm touching some of the wire and you see the black sh shrink wrap over it, uh, the reason for that is that. I had to cut the wire, or I, I cut the wire too short and had to mend it to make it longer so I can come back and do the proper uh, tuning of this, uh, of this uh, antenna. So we'll be right back. Okay, so for this setup, what I'm doing is I have a printed out sheet showing the mid-band frequencies for both general and extra portion of, the band, of each different band. And generally, my rule of thumb is to, especially with NFED half waves, since I'm doing 40, 20, 15, and 10, I set it up for the middle, mid, middle of the 40 meter band under the general portion of the band. That's where you're going to get most of your contacts. So in that case, that'll be 7.237. I've got that set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button and see what our SWR reading is. Okay, so we're not too bad. We're at 1.7 SWR. Let's get out of this and do a multi-band frequency. And we'll do a check on that. That's really not bad, guys. 1.7 on 40, 1.42 on 20, 1.41 on 15, and uh, 2, well, 2.3 on 10 ain't so great, so we're gonna have to make some adjustments. So we're gonna do little tiny incremental adjustments in cutting the wire. So I'll come back when that's done. All right, guys, so I gotta stop for just a second and uh, make a small rant. I'm back here now for the third time. Count the fingers, one, two, three. Because when I was out here a minute ago, when I was shooting and trying to get the, the antenna um, tuned up, I was cutting the wire because I thought I needed to take off more wire and my SWR actually went up. After looking at the distance between my antenna and where it was up in the tree, something in my mind didn't calculate right. So I went back and decided to take the whole thing apart and measure it back at home and see how much wire I had. So a little backstory here. This is the wire that was provided for me by a couple of my fellow ham friends when I was doing the antenna build for Field Day 2022. One of them, I don't know which one, and I know you're watching, I know you're watching, one of them shorted me by four feet on that wire. When I measured it out, including the wire that I'd already cut, I was at 63, point, 63 feet 2 inches, hence why my SWR is going, I'm, I keep cutting more wire, it should have been 68 feet, somebody decided to be cheap or they didn't pay attention to detail and cut me a too short of a wire. So anybody who took my class at field day, if your antenna is having an issue, measure your wire. You should always start out with about 68 feet and bring it down from there. Starting at 64 feet or 63 feet and 2 inches is not going to give you a, a, a proper reading. So I'm back here again for the third time. And by the way, you two that did this to me, you owe me four gallons of gas and a six pack. I'm irritated now. So now I got the issue fixed. I went back home. I measured out an extra four feet of wire, soldered it on, and got myself back up to 68 feet so I can now properly take it down to the length that I need it. So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and set everything back up again, try to get this wire cut to the proper uh, length for the best SWR, and we'll give it a test. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so with the wire now at the correct length, I got it at 68 feet, and I was assuming I was going to have to start cutting some. Um, I wanted to check out these SWR readings. This is on the middle, middle of the uh, two, or the uh, middle of the 40 meter band, in the general portion of the band. That's pretty fantastic, right there, as is. Looking at the actual SWR for that, we're sitting at 1.37. If I do a multi SWR reading. 
You'll see her 1.37 on 40, 1.6 on 20, uh, 1.5 on 17, 1.7 on 15, and 2.8, which is not that great, on uh, 10 meters. So I could probably go through and cut down a little bit more of this wire to get a little bit better SWR, but I think I might I might just go back and fold back maybe six inches of it and see if there's a difference. If not, I'm going to stick with these readings and this will uh, be ready to put on the air and see we can uh, see what the radio thinks about it and see if we can make some contacts, go hunt some people doing POTA. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so after I, I went back through and I shortened the wire down, I didn't cut anything this time. I just bent it back on itself and wound it back on itself there. I took about a foot, maybe maybe 14 inches down off the original length and went back, looked at the SWR, and there's really no major change. I'm still sitting at 1.38 on 40, 1.6, 1.7 on 20, and you saw the other ones. Um, I'm not gonna fight with that too much. What I wanna do is now is look at it on the radio and see what the radio sees the SWR as, and we'll go from there. So that's next. Okay, so we're set up on 40 meters here. I'm going to hit my menu, SWR. We're going to hit the play button. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like we're, yeah, we're about, we're about what the uh, rig expert was saying, about 1.38 on the SWR. I'm going to pop up to 20 meters. We're going to do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five. So 1 1.6, 1 1.7 is what we're getting on uh, 20 meters here. And if I go down to 15, or yeah, 15, <clears throat> do it again. One, two, three, four, five. We're about 1.3, so that's still pretty good. Do you guys hear this guy moaning in the background? This is a, a, a perfect example of a sad ham loser who happens to have a ham license, probably lives in mommy's daddy's basement, eating Cheetos all day long, has nothing better to do but screw up the airways with this stupid crap. KJ4 RQF, this is Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima. Okay, uh, Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima, this is KJ4 RQF. You've got, uh, oh, about a 5.8 or so into, uh, into central Georgia, just south of, south of Atlanta. Go ahead. Hey, I copied the 5.8 out of, out of Georgia. You're coming in about the same here, about a 5.859 here in Texas. Okay, very good. I just, uh, just put up uh, an MFED uh, uh, half wave antenna, so I was trying it out. Uh, just got it uh, strung up as a sloper, basically, into a pine tree here uh, near my shack. So uh, just checking it out, see how it's working. That's a fantastic coincidence because I'm actually doing the exact same thing. I just built an NFED half wave. I'm actually shooting a show for my YouTube channel, and I've got it up in a tree in a sloper configuration. And I'm just trying to reach somebody to test out if it was working. How about that? That's that's great. Uh, I just I have responded to an advertor to an email from uh, AA, uh, ARRL and I bought the kit that uh, that they were promoting, and uh, it seems to be working okay. Yeah, NFED half waves are probably one of my favorite antennas because they just they just work, and once you get them configured and ready to go and tuned up, yeah, it, it just it just works. Yeah, I've, I've got a, uh, a G5 RV is my was my original uh, antenna, and I've been very happy with that. Uh, I'm running this uh, this new one uh, about 90 degrees in orientation to that, and of course the, that G5 RV is just a horizontal up about. Uh, 30 or 35 feet or so. So it'd be interesting to switch back and forth to see uh, see how they compare. Well, it was good making contact with you, and I appreciate us both being on or on the air here, trying to test out our antennas and kind of meeting somewhere in the middle. <laughs> it was kind of a, a happenstance uh, thing, but it worked out really well. Yeah, 
that's for sure. I appreciate it. The, the name here is Chip, Charlie Hotel, India Papa. And uh, what's your handle back there? Hey, hey, Chip, good to meet you. My name is Scott, Sierra, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, Tango. Okay, Scott, very good. Thanks for coming back. Uh, appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, that's a real coincidence there. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> KJ4RQF will be clear. KJ4RQF, this is KI5MPL. Thanks for the QSO, and we'll talk to you soon. 73, KI5MPL clear. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to call that a win. I happen to catch some dude that was uh, out testing out his NFED halfway. He bought one of those ARRL NFEDs, and he was out testing his. I just happened to come across the frequency. I saw him calling CQ. You know, that's, you know, that's just how you do it sometimes. I couldn't find anybody, or I couldn't hear anybody that was doing parks on the air. Uh, I really tried. I, there's only like four people on 20, and there's one guy on 40, and 40 right now is just dead. Uh, but I guess being Monday, a lot of people are you know, back at work and doing stuff, so I really couldn't do a whole lot as far as making contacts for do, you know, any poda hunting. But that was really cool. And he, he came in nice and clear. He saw about a 5.8, 5.9 five, on me. He said I was about a 5.8 out of Georgia. So, you know, this antenna does work. If you have the proper length wire. <laughs> I'm never going to let that down. Um, so, I, I actually, when I went back home, I was talking to my wife about what had happened with the wire thing. And she's like, you know, that's kind of impressive that you were able to tell how long the wire was. Like, I don't know. Something just didn't sound right. I checked everything else on the antenna. I looked at the, I looked at the length of the antenna, where it was. And, you know, I've, had, I've got a bunch of NFED half waves. That's mainly my, that's my main go-to antenna, aside from the DX Commander Expedition. So, if I don't, I don't feel like setting up the DX Commander... Then I'm out here with the NFED halfway most of the time. I got seven or eight of those. So I'm used to the length or the distance between where I set the antenna up where the feed line is and where I have it set up into a tree. And something just looked off. And just that four and a half, that four feet or whatever it was, they shorted me on that wire is what made the difference. Um, so let's go back to the studio and wrap this up. But this was a success. Got the antenna works. And if you guys want to build one, I you know, suggest you go down and look at the link below. And uh, go get all the parts and build yourself one. Like I said, you can modify. We'll, we'll talk about that back in the studio. All right, guys. So I'm going to put this down as a win. Uh, this antenna worked out just fine. I don't really see any major advantage to building it out with these two 240-43 uh, toroids as opposed to a single 140-43. Uh, they'll both do 100 watts. I'm only pushing 100 watts because I don't have an amp, and I'm not going to bring one out when I'm going out in the field. Uh, so there's no real major advantage of doing that, but the, you know, the, the theory worked, the antenna works just fine. You saw the cue, so I had the guy over in Georgia, and uh, you know after I figured out that there was a screw up uh, because I didn't check the length of my wire, I trusted other people to do it for me, and they failed. Uh, once that was resolved, you know the uh, SWR was working out just fine. Now I did fold back on this thing. I still got it folded back. I didn't cut any wire off. I got to fold it back about, like I said, 16, 17 inches off of here. And it didn't make a difference on the SWR. It all stayed at, you know, 1.38 at 20 meters and 1.6 or so on 20 meters. Uh, so that might be a little, need a little more fine tuning down the road. But for the most part, I think this thing worked. So if you guys are interested in building this, like I said, there's links down below to the blog post I made on my website at hamradiofornontechies.com. And the incomplete parts list is there. You can use the 14043, you can do a 24043, you can double them up, whatever you want to do. And just make sure you're using at least a 100 picofarad capacitor. Uh, one kilovolt is going to be fine. Four will be better. I have a 15 kilovolt on here. But again, the, that's only going to, it's going to expand how it uh, tunes up on a band. It'll, it'll expand the frequency range on a band uh, by having a larger uh, capacitor on there. I'm not seeing any major difference as far as like power consumption or uh, how much power it can handle. Although I do believe, you know, I know the 14043s and especially 24043s will handle at least 100 watts. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, just use the right size, you know, uh, magnet wire for that. I think I used 18 gauge or 16 gauge on, on the larger one. And the smaller one, I probably use 18 or 20 gauge mag wire uh, to wrap that one. But I think that's uh, that pretty much does it, guys. Uh, let's get this wrapped up here and uh, go from there. I'd be inter interested in your comments. If you have any comments about this antenna? If you've got any questions about it, if you're th looking to build one, you know, email me. Go to my website on the Contact Us page. There's a nice form that you can fill out. I answer all my emails. answer all my comments. And be more than happy to help you guys out if you have any issues or problems or you want to have some questions about things. I'm 
little bit limited on what I know about the science part of it, but I, I, I built it and it works. You know, you saw your proofs in the pudding. You guys saw the thing work. Uh, anyway, guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. And click on the little bell. Be notified when I do new videos. And until then, guys, this is Ham Radio for non-techies, and we are clear.